So we have shifts and they work okay. Uh, there is another sort of functionality like shifts called rotates, which MIPS doesn't actually implement as an instruction, but there are pseudo instructions that are rotate. If we look at our uh, instruction sheet in our common pseudo instructions, uh, we'll see an instruction that says uh, rotate. Where are we here? Um, right there, rotate left and rotate right. And we can do that by a uh, shift amount amount or by a variable amount, L R O L and R O R. Uh, so what is this rotate? What does it do? Well, what it's doing is it's going to shift information back and forth in the register, but rather than throw the information away at the top and shift in zeros at the bottom, it's going to take the information from the top and put it in the bottom. So let's look at an example in uh, on paper. Well, here's an example of a rotate. Let's take an 8-bit number. Uh, let's take an 8-bit number that looks like this. And let's rotate it instead of shifting it. So normally, if we were to shift it by, let's do a shift left logical by three. Uh, normally, when we would do that, we'd shift it to the left, and we'd throw these three away, and we would put zeros in here instead. And that would be our new uh, result. But now, instead of that, we're going to take our original number again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's our original number. And instead, we're going to put these one at a time back into the back of the, of the number. So this 1 goes to here. So this becomes 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's an rotate left. And then we're going to do that again. And that's another rotate left. And then we're going to do that again. Uh, I did this one wrong. We take this one and put it here. We take this zero and put it here. So at each point in the uh, rotation, and you can see why it's called rotate, we take the number that's in the bottom, put it on the top. And we can do that in the left direction or the right direction. So we can say we, uh, we uh, cycle or recycle. <laughs> Instead of discarding, we recycle that number back uh, into the uh, other end of the operation. We can rotate left or right by an immediate amount stored in the shift value. Or we can rotate right and left by a variable amount. There is no arithmetic rotate because if we were to rotate into the point where there's a sign bit, we would wipe out that sign bit anyways. There's no such thing as an arithmetic rotate. It's strictly a logical operation. Um, and these are pseudo instructions. And so we're going to look at how they're actually implemented. Uh, they're implemented with shifts. And you might already have an idea of how you would do this with a few shifts. Uh, but we'll have a look at that. First, here are some examples. Again, these same numbers, A1 and T1, in our registers, and we're going to rotate to the right um, by 1. So here is rotating A1 to the right by 1. We move it to the right, and then we take this bit, and we put it all the way at the top. And so this 1 comes from where there was a 1 at the back end of that. Rotate to the left. Same idea. We're going to move in this direction, and we're going to take this 1 here, and we're going to put it here instead. Right? So instead of just wiping out the results where we shift where we shift into one direction or another, we're going to rotate this result into uh, the other direction. Now, uh, a rotate right by an amount stored in a register. This is an amount stored in number three. We're going to rotate by three. Uh, if we take, let's get rid of some of this clutter. If we take the, uh, if we're rotating to the right, we're going to take these three bits. Um, no, sorry, not those three bits. These three bits and we're going to move them around to the right. The whole thing, the whole thing moves to the right, and then the whatever's left moves back to the left. Okay, That gives you a hint of sort of how we're actually going to do this. And then again, rotate left by 3. We take these 1, 0, 1, and we're going to move it the other direction. Again, get rid of some of this clutter. Uh, and uh, as we saw before, a rotate by 32 would get you back to the original number, but it's not permitted uh, because the biggest number you can rotate by is 31. This is actually also true in variable shifts, right? If you ask for a shift by uh, some number that's stored in a register, and the number that's stored in the register is bigger than 31, the machine will ignore all the numbers above the fifth bit. It'll just take those bottom five bits and rotate by that amount. So if you ask for a rotate by 627, it's just going to rotate by whatever 627 mod 31 is. It's just going to get rid of everything else and just keep the 31. I guess mod 32. Uh, it's just going to keep the 31 
Uh, and so that's an important thing to remember is that any value that's above 31 is just ignored. Uh, rotate by 32 is equivalent to a rotate by 1. Uh, zero. A rotate by 31 is a is a equivalent to a rotate by... Sorry, I'll say that again. A rotate by 32 is equivalent to a rotate by 0 uh, because the number 32 looks like 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and those five bits have a 0. And so, as you might expect, it's equivalent, and therefore we don't even need to implement it. Uh, okay, so those are rotates, and this is how we're going to do this in code. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually do this a, instead of trying to think of some way to one bit at a time move the data around uh, and sort of keep and retrieve the value that's shifted out of one side and then put it back in the other. Instead, we're going to recognize uh, that a rotate is equivalent to, so let's take a, an 8-bit number that we can recognize, 10110111. One, 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 one. So there's an 8-bit number that's a 1, and then two 1s, and then three 1s, easy enough to recognize. If we were to rotate this by 4 in the left direction, so we're going to rotate this by 4, what we're going to get is these bits are going to be on the top, right? We're going to rotate this by 4, so it's 0, 1, 1, 1. And then 1 by 1, we're going to get these bits back in the bottom, 1, and then 0, and then 1, and then 1, 1 by 1. And what you notice is that the result is actually as if you took this and just flipped the pieces, right? You take the 0100, you shift it to the left by some amount. You take the 1011, you shift it to the right by some amount. And then uh, you just merge those two pieces. And it's even easier than that because we don't have to think about like how far and how to split it up. All we have to do, let's let's do this again with three instead of four because it might be a little bit easier to see. One, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. So we're going to shift it to the right by three in this example. Rotate to the right by three. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the, the, the sort of top part, everything but the bottom three, and we're going to move that in this direction, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. All right. And then yeah, I could even use a different color to make this interesting. We can take the bottom part and move it to the other direction. And now how far do we have to move that by? Right? If we're rotating this by 3, we have to rotate this by 5. So in fact, what we do is first step is we make two copies of this number, 10110111, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 and then 10110111, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. and we're going to take the first, oh, I've, I'm out of frame here. We're going to take the first copy, and we're going to rot, we're going to do what we ask, right? Rotate to the right by three. We're going to do a shift to the right by three, because that's all we have access to. We're going to shift to the right by three, and it looks like this, zero, 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 one, zero, one, one, zero. We're shifting it to the right by three. So that's shift right logical by three. And this is the result we get. Then we're going to take the other copy and we're going to shift it to the left by the difference of the amount of the entire register minus the shift amount we want to do. So now we're going to shift left logical by eight minus three uh, because this is an eight bit register and 8 minus 3 is 5, and so we're shifting it into the left by 5, and we get 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I think you can see where we're going with this. Now all we have to do is combine these. Right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We OR them together, and we get our rotated result. And that's how we do rotates. And in fact, if we look at the instructions in the pseudo instruction, that's what we do. We're going to shift left. So when we do a regular rotate, we have the amount that we want to shift by in the shift amount. <clears throat> and so the assembler itself can produce these other instructions very easily. We shift left, we shift right. So we're doing, going to do a rotate left. <clears throat> Pardon me. We're going to shift right by 32 minus the shift amount. That's going to make the top half or the, the shift right, that's going to make the bottom half. <laughs> and then we're going to shift left by the original shift amount. That's going to make the top half. 
we need another place to put them. This is the assembler temporary register is going to store this part. The, de the destination register is going to store this part. And then we, or together, the assembler temporary register with the destination register and put the result in the destination register. So this is how we do an immediate shift amount. <clears throat> now the variable one is a little bit trickier because we don't actually know how much we're shifting by. We have to look into a register to figure out how to shift by. And we don't have all these extra variables. We don't have all these extra registers. All we have is the assembler temporary register. So we have to be a little bit creative. First, we're going to shift <clears throat> from uh, we're going to shift by the variable amount into the destination register to put one half of the number in. Then we're going to use the assembler temporary to contain to produce the opposite amount to shift by. We're going to subtract unsigned uh, the assembler temporary value into the assembler temporary, the amount that's stored in the uh, RS register, zero minus it. So zero minus, that is gonna give us a negative number. Just gonna make that number negative number, okay? And then we are going to add that negative number to 32. Add immediate unsigned into assembler temporary, what's currently in assembler temporary, and 32. So it takes a few steps to do this. First, we have to make the shift amount negative. Then we have to add that negative number to 32. And that is what gets us into the assembler temporary register, the amount to shift in the other direction. Then we can do that shift in the other direction using the assembler temporary value, shifting the, uh, the source information uh, into the assembler temporary again by the assembler temporary amount. And so this is why it's really, really important that we can use registers um, <laughs> that we have access to. We can use them twice. We can use them once as a source and then again as a destination, and that's not going to mess anything up. Because if it did, we'd be in trouble. We'd need many more registers to be able to do this work. Then, now that we've got the RD containing one half of the rotated amount, AT containing the other half of the rotated amount, now we can just OR them together like we did for the variable or for the <laughs> non variable version, and we've got our final result. And you'll notice, by the way, just for those of you who have stuck around to the end of this video as a bit of a bonus, um, I am not putting on the sheet the amount, uh, the, the pseudocode to do variable rotates. Uh, it's not on the sheet. That should give you some information. And so the next video, we'll talk about floating point numbers.